Hello. In this video, we're going to take a look at the new options in the in the lights and how the lights were changed for for 20, 2018. So first, we're going to start with the area light, and as we can see, we now have the samples per light option back in 2015. It was a global setting. And with this, you can control your uh, render times much better than before. The next option is the image option for the area light, where you can choose a texture to map onto the luminaire easily without having to go to the edit nodes. And I've got the Lightwave logo. And you, as you can see, it's visible in the specular highlight. And if I turn on the visible to camera, you can see it on the luminaire itself. It is important sampled. And the MIS samples determines what the resolution of the pre-calculated multiple important sampling table is. And you can increase the detail by setting this value to something higher. The next option is the portal option, which I'm going to demonstrate in a different instance of layout. First, we'll make a quick render with uh, GI, brute force, not interpolated. And so look at the difference with using portal lights and not using portal lights. The GI is using 16 samples. There is no anti-aliasing, so we can get a nice image to compare with. As you can see, fairly, fairly noisy, 22 seconds. Not bad. We open the scene editor and turn on these two portal lights I have created and placed at the window openings. Um, here's the, this is the portal switch. The only thing you have to do is check the portal. Um, I use light intensity of one because it will then use the exact intensity of the backdrop. But of course, you can increase it to create something brighter than the backdrop. I'm going to disable the global illumination so we can see the effects of the portal lights. And as you can see, the portal lights have much better quality because of the the illumination can be guided using the area lights with the portal mode on. If we switch between the GI and the portal light options, the quality difference is much better and the render time is almost half of what it was with just GI. The next option is the normalize option. The normalize option keeps the light intensity constant even when the light is scaled. So I'm going to scale the area light, make it smaller. And you can see the light intensity is the same regardless of the size of the light. If I disable the normalize and make the light smaller, you can see the illumination is now darker. This, of course, is more physically based, but it's good to have 
control over how your lights work. The next light is the distant light. It is not the same as it was before. Now we have the angle setting right here in the distant light and I can by increasing it I can make the distant light a circular distant light to simulate sun etc and I can also make it visible to camera and let me find the light here and there it is it is now visible to camera you can use textures in the node editor to map an image on it maybe a moon texture to light light up a night scene and have a correct specular highlights and correct diffuse lighting from from your uh, mapped distant light the next light is the environment light by default I'm not seeing anything because I don't have a backdrop so I'm going to enable this texture I applied here this is using the daytime EXR and the environment light is a full sphere that encompasses the entire scene and you can also increase the multiple importance sampling here to make the, the lookup table more accurate. I can show you the difference with a lower quality lookup table and a higher quality lookup table by rotating the backdrop texture and you can see a slight brightness shift because of how the backdrop is pre-processed and if I increase it to 1024 which is a good number for this image and rotate it, it there is no brightness shift anymore but it's uh, slightly slower to pre-process what the, what the environment light also produces that the dome light in 2015 did not are important sampled specular highlights of the backdrop so, so it looks like if your as if your object is actually reflecting the backdrop but technically it isn't it is just reflecting the, the specular highlights and I can look at the specular direct buffer to see that it is in fact specular highlights. I will go more in depth with the environment light and how to use it in different situations in uh, another video. The next one we have is linear light. It is almost like before but now we have these size settings let me turn on visible to camera uh, so we can control the the thickness of the light which we couldn't before and if I rotate it we can see that it's a uh, a hollowed out cylinder unless we use this option called ends which then makes the object a solid cylinder. We also have the length setting as we did before and the normalized setting as in all the other lights. Next we have the end gun light. It is the same as the area light except you have the the sides setting so I can have uh, a triangle, a quad, a pentagon, hexagon, septagon, etc. And if the size is less than three, it becomes a circle. All the other options are the same as 
in the area light. Next we have the photometric, photometric light. Very little has changed with this light except that the brightness is now fully controlled by the IAS file you load and should match the, the original light source accurately. Point light, nothing has changed. Let's skip over that and do the primitive light last. The next one is the spherical light. The only uh, change we have here is the ability to map, map the image, the MIS samples for the image mapping and the normalize option. And then we have the spotlight, which has some nice, nice new options. Let me make it wider and point towards the object a little bit more. In the spotlight, we also have the multiple importance sampling table size, and it helps with the better sampling of the projection image. But we also have the new size option, which makes the spotlight have a base size and turns it into a into an area light with a spotlight cone. So you can get nice soft shadows easily from a spotlight and also have the these uh, spotlight angle controls as you did before. The normalized setting is the same as with uh, all the other lights. And next we're going to take a look at the primitive light. This light uses any mesh as a light source and you can select the, the primitive from this drop down menu just I'm gonna go to select the, the Buddha and as you can see we have visible to camera set to on so you can see that it, it is actually the Buddha model I can rotate it and place it in any way I want. You can see the specular highlight is correct. It is very useful when you have shapes you want to use at, as light sources that cannot be represented with all the other light shapes. The sample surface option, if I'm going to enable it, everything goes dark because the surface on the object we are sampling does not have any luminosity. So what I've set up here is a purple color uh, and I'm going to increase the luminosity setting and we can see that the, the lighting is now purple. So that's it for the lights and uh, I'll see you next time.